Of course, Voyager 1 and 2 were not initially meant to travel all the way to interstellar space. They were instead built for a five-year mission to explore Jupiter and Saturn and their larger moons, which was only possible thanks to a rare, once every 176 years planetary alignment. However, after completing all of its initial objectives on Jupiter and Saturn, the Voyager mission team added flybys of Uranus and Neptune to one of the probe's objectives. Later, these two were completed, so NASA announced the start of the even more ambitious Voyager interstellar mission, with the purpose of exploring the outer limits of the Sun's sphere of influence and beyond. This final journey would take both probes off the ecliptic to unexplored parts of the solar system, such as the termination shock and the denser and hotter heliosheath, before finally crossing the heliopores into interstellar space. But how did these incredible machines manage to accomplish so much beyond the scope of their original mission? It all comes down to that old but incredibly effective technology. NASA scientists made a number of forward-thinking design choices that allowed the probes to far exceed their initial objectives. To put it simply, they were built different. Here's how. Let's start with one of the most consequential decisions, the fuel source. Each probe is equipped with a long-lasting radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which converts heat from the decaying plutonium-238 isotope into electric power. These generators were capable of producing 157 watts of electrical power upon takeoff, about enough to power a laptop and maybe charge a mobile phone too. This might not sound like much, but was more than Voyager needed. 